I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is March 30th, 2017. And in this video, I'm going to be going over syslog ng, and more specifically, how to uh, format messages. Uh, and what I'm going to try to do is just get the raw messages. So in cases where you're like sending, uh, you have some kind of application sending raw JSON files, um, JSON files, raw JSON to your logger, you want to get the raw JSON and not all the extra information. So I'm going to be going over how to do that. Okay, first of all, I'm kind of starting in the middle here. I've already got things set up. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with syslog ng or need a little bit of help, I've, you can go click up here, and I should have a couple of videos that I've done in the past few days kind of showing how to set it up and do a few things with it. Uh, but having had that set up, I'm just going to go right now and tail some logs and show you what I have. Uh, so if I go here and tail one of my logs that I'm sending, one of my things, one of my logs I'm sending logs to through syslog ng, and I use logger, in this case, and do, let's see, p local zero dot info, and send a message. I send a message through, and it comes through just fine. But in this case, I would prefer to have just the raw message in this log file. And what I'm getting here is I'm getting my message, but I'm also getting some extra pieces of information. I'm getting a timestamp that's put in there by syslog ng, uh, the name of the server, which in this case my server has, happens to be called syslog, and a user ID. And now I don't want those. I want, in my case, I just want the raw uh, message I sent to it, the raw log. So to do that, what I have to do is I have to go edit syslog ng, syslog ng dot com. So open that up, and I've already got this set up to send to that file. And there it is. So in my case, here I am sending to that file right now. So what you do is you go to your destination and you can do what's called, an, I think it's called an inline filter. And just to help you out a little bit, I will stick a link to this page on my on in the show notes. But what this is, this goes more in depth on things you can do. And you can do a lot more fancy stuff that I'm gonna do here. All I want is a raw message. Um, so I'm gonna make it fairly simple. So what I can do is I can go down here and in the file I can put an inline template. And I only want the message so I can put this message variable there and uh, put a carriage return at the end and then there we go. And that should be it. So I'll save it and I'll do a, a I'll reload it Okay, reload it. And now, uh, something I forgot to show in my videos yesterday, which I, because I didn't quite understand yesterday, is, um, well, I did show some ways that if you're having, if you mistype or do something wrong in your configuration file, um, and you hit reload, what reload will do is it actually won't restart the service. It'll actually make sure the configuration file is correct before it reloads. And if there's a problem, it will not restart. It won't use the new configuration file, but it'll keep the old one going, which is nice in some cases. Uh, but you don't know what's going on, because uh, if there's an error, it's not going to tell you here. But if I look at the status, it turns out they will tell you here. And so I look it, here, you can see it's been reloaded, and everything's looking fine right now. So it's reloaded at 1535, and it looks like all is good. But how do you tell if you screwed up? Let me go screw up on purpose. So I'll put in some bad code in here. And I'll reload it. And then I'll go look at the status. And now you should see this status, error parsing new configuration. So that's an easy way to go check if your um, if your parse is wrong. Uh, another way to do that, which I mentioned in the other video, is you can tail uh, var log syslog and you should see that same error right there so whatever the way is easier for you okay let me go fix that and restart it again yeah. reload so now we should be good and so now i should be seeing my raw message so now if i go back to my logger let me go tail that file again there we go. So there's my message. So now I should get my raw message. 
And there we are. There's my raw message. So it is working exactly how I would hope it would. Um, also, I can come in here and put some JSON. Oh, where? Uh, let me try this. Um, there you go, and it's working. So I'm getting I'm getting out exactly what I want. So in this case, if you if your application is working, you're done. However, you might have some little nuances. So it turns out in. Um, and I think it has to do with uh, the logger 3164. Oh, now I'm going to have to go look. Uh, anyway, so I'll, I'll go. There, there, there can be some issues. I'm going to do go show a simple Python program to show some of the issues that Python has when it's trying to send a raw message. Okay, now from a previous time, I have a um, previous video. I should have a Python logger in here. And so I'm going to tweak it a little bit. And this, okay, as is looks okay. So now this, as is, should um, send logs to devlog. And the way that I've set up my syslog.ng file, it should, uh, because, uh, yes, because facility here, 16, is local, local zero. This should send messages there. Now, currently, I got this little format, but it's not doing much. And so it's just kind of raw text, not JSON. And... I'm, and I believe I'm filtering on debug, but let me go check that. So now if I run this, I should get my messages through. Um, there we go. And yeah, I'm filtering out debug. So I'm getting I'm getting the wrong message. So I'm getting that information and I'm getting my message. And I have that, uh, that's how I formatted it. So that's working just fine. But there is an is issue if I start trying to send a JSON. So if I come in here and I, you know, just JSONify a little bit. I have issues. So I come in here and say uh, timestamp. And yeah, that should be a raw make it a point and text. Oh, and there. That looks JSON y. Okay. Now run it. It kind of goes through, but it's doing some little weird parsing. And you can see right here, I am getting, oh, I'm getting an extra piece of the timestamp. I don't want that. That is, well, I'm not going to, well, it's not ASC time, it is. Oh, that's where you got to format it later on. Ah, you're making me go look that up. Okay, I'm going to go look that up because I don't want that extra little bit of data. Okay, got that one figured out. So rather than AESC time, it's created, and that should give you the timestamp since uh, epoch time. So if I run that, which I kind of already did, you can see now I'm getting the numerical timestamp rather than that configuration. So, uh, but there's a problem. So I'm actually missing parts of this. So I'm actually missing uh, this whole section here with the num. So it's actually splitting it at the colon. Don't know why. Uh, but I think it's just the manner and way manner and way it sends it. But I, uh, you can fight with it. And you can probably figure it out some more, or you can do the lazy way. I did the. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say lazy because as you, um, if you have an app, you have a Python app doing this, you're going to pipe that Python app to a local zero, or local one, a very specific log in SysNG. So you're not going to affect anyone else. So I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing. So I can go in here and tweak it again. find it. There we go. Now what happens in this case is it also splits off um, for whatever reason. It's going to split. When it does that, it actually parses it into another part. So you can say message header. And to make it simpler, this is what I did. You can also add these just to split it apart and make it easier to read. So for some reason, if it sees that colon, it's going to separate those into two. One's going to be a message header and one's going to be the message. And so you need to smash them back together if you're going to do a raw JSON. Um, oh, wait, before I do that. Okay. Let's see, I'll make a point. 
before I do that, let me just undo that for a second. If I go back to my um, example here, and I put anything else in front, so now it's not JSON, but there's something in front. And now I run it. You know, I'm getting it's splitting off that header. Well, I guess it still is missing it. Okay, so it's still cutting off part of it. Okay, it's cutting off that test. Anyway, it's got issues, right? Now let's kill that anyway. Anyway, back to what I was doing. Okay, back to what I was doing. So now I come down here and learn how to type and do a message header msghdr. There we go. And then reload that. Do a double check to make sure it took. And looks, oh, error parsing. It did not take. Okay, what do I do? MSG. HDR. That's right. And move that for a second. Reload. Look at the status. Oh, it has an error to begin with. Okay, what did I do? doesn't like my curly braces. Oh, I'm doing that would be why. Not those. Those. That would be why. Wrong braces. Okay. How about that? Message header. Reload. Status. Looks good now. Okay, now if we run it, yay, we're getting our timestamp. We're getting the time, so we're getting the raw JSON exactly what we wanted. And as a test, I could put the um, just to show that doing it raw now. I could put that just garbledy gook in front of it. again and so see I get all that out so that is doing what it should be doing now or what I intended to do and so now I'm getting the raw out which in many cases is what we want we want to use the uh, the nice nice tools of the syslog so we want to use the syslog but we want to raw output our own raw data and so that is a Simple, nice way to do it. And so now, um, I think that's all you need to know to output your raw JSON or your raw log file out. Um, there you go. That should be it for this video. Okay, actually one more thing I have to do, which is gonna drive me nuts because I noticed it as I was editing the video that I did not do my JSON right. <laughs> so that's not JSON and it's gonna drive me nuts if I don't correct it. I'm sure there's someone who's more anal than me watching this video going, that's not JSON. So let me correct that. And now let me get some J actual JSON logs out. Yeah, it looks a little more JSON-y. And just to be above board, I'm gonna go uh, to double check. I'm gonna go to jsonlint.com. It's a nice little website where you can check your JSON. And paste it and check it. And it's valid. So 
Good. So there you go. Valid Jason. I just had to fix that because it was going to drive me nuts. And I'm sure it might drive someone else nuts watching Invalid Jason. Okay. So that should be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.